When I saw this photo, I had to know about the photographer. I had an instinct that it was someone special, and wow, was I right. Born in 1907, Toni Frizzell was a woman breaking ground in a male-dominated industry. Her list of credits is staggering. She worked for prominent fashion magazines like Vogue and Harper's Bazaar in the 1930s. She photographed World War II and the Tuskegee Airmen in the 1940s. In the 50s, she covered the wedding of John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier, created Winston Churchill's official portrait, and was the first woman staff photographer at Sports Illustrated. Above all, Frizzell was interested in raising the profiles of important women. She said, quote, I've always admired strong women, women of adventurous mind, women active in doing original things. Frizzell was born into wealth and privilege in New York City. Her father was a well-known physician, medical director at St. Luke's Hospital, and a professor at Columbia University. Her mother was from a line of prominent families, including politicians like Missouri Governor John S. Phelps, and Revolutionary War hero Major General Noah Phelps. Frizzell's family also had a history of strong women who did things from founding orphanages to leading civic organizations to helping American soldiers at the front lines of World War I. Toni Frizzell faced tragedies early in her life. In 1923, at 16, her brother Montgomery died in a climbing accident in Italy just before his 18th birthday. 1931 proved to be her most difficult year. Her oldest brother, Varick, was filming a feature film in Newfoundland aboard a seal hunting vessel to capture realistic action sequences. There was dynamite aboard the ship in case it became stuck in the ice, and it exploded unexpectedly, claiming 28 lives, including Varick. Tony greatly admired her oldest brother, Varick. She had always taken photos as a child, but mostly learned the technical side from him. After Varick's passing, Tony prepared to retreat to Newport, Rhode Island with her ailing mother, who would end up passing six months later. But before she left, her New York neighbor, an editor at Vanity Fair, loaned her her first professional camera, a Rolleiflex, and encouraged her to take photos of her socialite friends over the summer. The resulting photos were published in Town & Country magazine. Frizzell's wealth and social connections were vital to getting her start in fashion photography, but she soon carved out her own niche among the top magazines of the day and went on to use her skills in service to others. In 1930, she began working at Vogue as a caption writer, but quickly lost the job because of her poor spelling, which sounds ridiculous today, but it was a vital skill at the time. In the 1930s, Frizzell married financier Francis Mack Bacon III. She kept her name, which is something my wife definitely appreciates. They bought a house on Long Island called Sherawog with parts of the home dating back to 1689. They had two children. All the while, she was working as one of the leading photographers of the day. Toni Frizzell was known for two major contributions to fashion photography. First, she was credited as being one of the innovators bringing fashion out of the studio and onto locations around the world. This would become the dominant style of fashion photography in the major magazines. Secondly, her work photographing her peers in elite social circles in a way led to what we see today with social media influencers. Her work became this sort of aspirational lifestyle photography, stylish women in action, not just posing for the camera, they were dressed in fashionable activewear, doing everyday things in their beautiful homes on spectacular estates. Frizzell began to tire of fashion work by the end of the 30s. She saw that war was shaping up in Europe and wanted to do something to volunteer, so she began taking photos for the Red Cross. Much of her work centered around women who served and those affected by war, mostly orphaned children. She looked to get to the front lines, but even with her connections and skills, she struggled to get accreditation. In early 1945, she did manage to get to the front and photograph some soldiers. And in March, she connected with Colonel Benjamin O. Davis Jr., then commander of the Tuskegee Airmen stationed in Italy. He let her photograph him and his men going about their daily activities. They were a part of the African-American 332nd Army Air Force. Frizzell was the only professional photographer that photographed this unit since the Army was actively minimizing their coverage because of their race. After the war, Frizzell created some of her best-known fashion images. In 1946, she photographed Natalie Nickerson Payne modeling the new swimsuit style named for Bikini Atoll, the atomic bomb test site. Another famous image is this underwater photo from Wikiwachi Spring in Florida from 1947. This image was used as the album cover for Bill Evans' Undercurrents in 1962. In 1950, Frizzell was able to make the photograph of Winston Churchill, which became his official portrait and a favorite of Lady Churchill. After it was published, Frizzell received a note, quote, Dear Miss Frizzell, your Churchill is superb. 
It is a historical document. How fortunate that you two got together on that exact day. Congratulations, signed Irving Penn. If you're not familiar with Penn, he was one of the preeminent fashion photographers of the 20th century, so you can see how well she was respected by her even more famous peers. In 1953, Fazell documented the Bouvier Kennedy wedding for Harper's Bazaar because of her connection to the bride. But when the magazine's famed editor, Carol Snow, learned that Frizzell didn't have exclusive photos, she refused to publish the images or pay Frizzell for her work, ultimately souring her relationship with the magazine. Also in 1953, Frizzell became the first woman to be a staff photographer for Sports Illustrated. Now, at first that struck me as strange, a photographer known for fashion stalking the sidelines of football games. But then I learned something new. When it began, Sports Illustrated was primarily focused on sports of the upper classes like skiing, horseback riding, yachting, hunting. So Frizzell seems a perfect fit for all of this. Throughout the 1960s, Frizzell continued working for major publications like Life and Vogue. She photographed a documentary project for a book on the King Ranch in Texas. By the end of the 60s, Frizzell's health was failing and she began to slow down at the insistence of her husband. She developed Alzheimer's, and before her memories faded, she committed herself to documenting her life and cementing her legacy as a photographer. She donated her photo archive to the Library of Congress. This included 270,000 black and white negatives, 42,000 color transparencies, and 25,000 enlargement prints and proof sheets. Frizzell's own selection of about 1,800 of her best and most representative photographs have been digitized and can be viewed online. Frizzell passed at the age of 81 in 1988. In 1994, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis helped choose the photographs for Frizzell's biography, Tony Frizzell, Photographs, 1933 to 1967. Frizzell's daughter, Sidney Stafford, led the project. George Plimpton wrote the text. It's vital we don't forget these photographers who helped to pave the way for our modern view of photography while also providing an important historical document. And now you know Tony Frizzell.